Thanks for joining us in this devotional we call Loving Truth. We're looking at Psalm 42. Now, if you were to look at the old Hebrew Bible, Psalm 42 and Psalm 43 are actually one in the same. And that's because there is a similar chorus. Um, twice in Psalm 42, once in Psalm 43. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my trust, my hope in God. I will praise him again, my God and my Savior. So that's Psalm 42, verse 5, repeated at the end of the psalm, and then once again in Psalm 43. This is a psalm of discouragement, but it's also a psalm of determination. In fact, that's what it says in verse 6. I am deeply discouraged right now, but I will remember you. I think it's a classic beginning in Psalm 42, verse 1. As the deer pants or longs for the water brooks, the streams of water, the rivers that give life and refreshing drink, so my soul longs for you, O God. I thirst for God, for the living God. And then this haunting question, when can I go and stand before God? When can I be in his presence? He's greatly discouraged, and he talks about his tears. Verse 3, day and night, that has been my food. Tears and tears alone, instead of the refreshing water brooks uh, from the... Uh, from the mouth of God, from the word of God, he has tears for his food. Enemies continually taunt him, verse 3. And the enemies come up back again in verse 10. Their taunts break my bones and they scoff. Where is this God of yours? So he's hurting physically. He's hurting emotionally. And he's hurting in the sense of community, his spiritual state is broken and he feels that God has forgotten him. That's verse nine. Oh God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Now the head knows one thing, but the heart feels something far different. We know theologically that God will never leave us nor forsake us, but in our own experience, we feel that we have been abandoned. And so David says he is greatly discouraged. He longs for God, but God doesn't show up. Even his enemies say, where is this God of yours? So they could clearly see the, the fact that David was despondent and the fact that David felt uh, discouraged and rejected by God. He remembered how it used to be, verse 4. He said, my heart is breaking. And I remember how it used to be when I walked with the crowds of worshipers leading with the great, in the great procession, procession to the house of God. I remember how it used to be. We were singing with songs of joy and gratitude. It was a great celebration. But now I'm discouraged and my heart is despondent. That's exactly the normal Christian life for many of us. I don't mean it's the norm that God wants us to accept. I mean, it is a common experience that we face. Trials sometimes are so difficult and they bring us down that we begin to wonder if God has forgotten us and we cry out, where is the living God? I pant for him like the deer pants for the water brooks. It's interesting as I read this psalm and I focus on that chorus, it tells me that even though David didn't have immediate relief, he found faith, he found a commitment to trust the word of God, and he was determined to believe God. We sometimes say that we will trust him even though we cannot trace him. We cannot see him out. We cannot understand his ways, but we know he's there because he said he is. And in our hearts, we're determined to believe him. That's why faith is the victory. 
In time, God will change our situation and vindicate our cause. But in the moment of discouragement, when we feel that all is lost, remember, God is with you. He's not left you. And as it says in the chorus, I will put my hope in God. I may not praise him. I may not be filled with joy right now, but I will praise him again for he is my savior and my God. Whatever the trial is that you're facing, understand this. God is there. God is there to help and commit your heart to him in prayer and leave your burden at the foot of the cross. Heavenly Father, hear our cry, answer our prayer, and show up in a mighty way. Increase our faith. In Jesus' name, amen.